What's up, guys? Welcome back to another daily Bible reading snapshot. Today, we're reading Judges 15, 16, and 17. We'll be finishing the end of the story of Samson and then going on to talk about the tribe of Dan, which is really important, but we'll get there in a minute. Um, But here in Judges 15, we see the result of Samson's fiance being taken away from him. It says that he got really mad. He took 300 foxes, which you can imagine this really strong dude catching foxes. Um, I just think that'd be an interesting sight. He takes them, ties their tails together, um, lights their tails on fire, so this is not very uh, kid-friendly, and then makes them run through their fields. What happens if you've got 300 pairs of foxes tied together with their tails on fire in a field? Well, fields catch on fire, and that's what happens. So they see that their crops are burning, these Philistines, they get really upset, and they come out and say, what is this all about? And it says that it's because of Samson. Samson did this, and he is really mad, and they want to take him out. And it says that Samson was hiding in Judah, in the tribe of Judah, in um, in an area called Lehi. L-E-H-I, Lehi. We're going to see that name come up a few times here. And it says that those guys came to Samson and said, Samson, Samson, what are you doing? Uh, You know you're going to get us killed, right? How about you just turn yourself in? And Samson says, okay, here, I'll let you guys turn me in, you Israelites, turn me into the Philistines, but just put a new rope on me and I will act like I am bound. And when I get to the Philistines, I'm going to break my chains off and I'm going to go fight them. And they're like, okay, whatever, let's do it. So they go do that. Samson is bound. He breaks free, grabs a jawbone of a donkey, which is like this, you know, you could look it up on the internet, what a jawbone of a donkey looks like. It's like a, it's almost like a ax looking bone. I don't know how exactly to describe it, but it's, it's interesting. You could imagine somebody taking it and just killing a bunch of people. And that's what Samson does. It says he kills a thousand Philistines here in Judges 15 um, with a jawbone of a donkey. Crazy. And I want you to see, you might say, wait, wait a minute. Is this guy like a superhero? Like in the sense that um, he was like seven feet tall, like 400 pounds, pure muscle. Um, I don't think so. I actually think that Samson was probably a normal looking guy, and the whole point of this was to show God's amazing power. Obviously, Samson had long hair, because that was something that was promised in Judges 13, and we see come up later in Judges 16, his hair is important, God does not want him to cut his hair, but he's a strong guy who uh, God specially gifts to kill these Philistines, to judge these people, and to start to rule Israel. So, in Judges 16... It says that Samson went to Gaza, which is another town um, that's a a Philistine town. And it says that he uh, met a prostitute and he kind of fell in love with this lady a little bit. And then it says that um, the Philistines tried to go get him. And when they did that and tried to get him, he left and then grabbed the gates of the city, which the gates, think about this, 20 foot tall high, steel, iron gates throws these gates on his back and walks up a mountain to the city of Hebron and dumps the gates off there. This is outrageous. I mean, that is just insane. Imagine somebody carrying um, the big, big gates to, you know, those mansions or like castles, those big gates of iron, right? It's like he took those iron gates off their hinges, huge, 20 feet tall, just throws them on his back and says, okay, I'm going to climb up a mountain and dump them off at Hebron. That is insane. Um, But that's what he does. And then it says, in the valley of Sorek, he met a woman named Delilah. He falls in love again. This is the third woman that has entered his life that is going to cause him a lot of trouble. Really, it's his fault here, not really theirs. But um, anyway, she is a, is a Philistine. And this lady is not a good lady. And she wants the Philistines to destroy Samson because Samson has done so much damage to the Philistines. And it says that Samson and her get in this relationship. And Samson starts lying to her about the reason of his, of his strength. And she gets really upset by this and kind of like the first lady, uh, the fiance from uh, chapter 14 that was just constantly wearing Samson down. um, This lady, Delilah, wears Samson down and he finally tells her the truth and they have him have his hair cut, which by the way, Delilah, this is a Bible trivia answer, Delilah did not cut his hair. Since Delilah had a barber or a person, a Philistine, cut his hair. Um, And when that happens, God, it says, leaves him. God takes his strength away from him. His super powerful strength is taken away and he is taken as a prisoner. They gouge his eyes out, which again, Book of Judges is pretty gross. We've seen a lot of gross things already today. His eyes are gouged out. He's taken to to Gaza. He is uh, actually 
brought out to be a prisoner and to be entertainment for this party for the temple of Dagon, which was one of the false gods there. And it says at that party, while he's entertaining, um, while he's completely embarrassed, he leans against these two pillars and prays to God one last time. God, give me strength one last time to defeat these Philistines. And God gives him the strength and he pushes these pillars over and the whole house with 3,000 people. We're not talking about a little house here. We're talking about like a huge building. 3,000 people are killed. It says there's more that were killed in his death than in his lifetime. So in this moment, he judges um, even the the false god Dagon here by destroying this temple. And God lets him do that, which Samson is just such a weird character in the Bible. If you think about all the stuff that God uses him for, but how bad of a guy he was, you just see that in the book of Judges especially, God is doing some interesting things here with some really bad people. So that happens in Judges 16. Judges 17 is also very important. We see that um, there's a guy named Micah and there's this guy who's a Levite. And it says that Micah hires this Levite to be his personal priest. And we're going to see how that turns uh, very bad in Judges 18, but we'll see that tomorrow. So uh, let's turn to the New Testament. Let's check out Luke chapter 10 is what we're starting today. Luke chapter 10, um, Jesus sends out the 72. Um, he's going to send out these disciples, these um, mini apostles, so to speak, to go out and to preach. And he's going to give them some instructions. But one of the things he says that's very important that I want to focus on today is the woes or the curses on the unrepentant cities. Chorazin, Bethsaida, uh, even Capernaum. It says Tyre and Sidon, these two evil cities, they will experience less judgment than these um, so-called little righteous villages because they did not reject Jesus. And the principle here that I want you to understand is the more that you know about God, the more you will be held accountable for that knowledge. And the blessing and the curse for you, if you've grown up in the church or you're watching this video or you're in the narrow or whatever, um, the blessing and the curse is, the blessing is God has instructed you so much. He's given you so much knowledge of his word. Um, but the curse of that is, if you don't respond correctly to it, you will be held more responsible than the person that it sits next to you in math class because they don't know all that you know. They will still be held responsible for their sin, but if you reject Jesus and you reject what God's word says, you will be held more responsible. So please don't be like Corzin, don't be like Bethsaida, respond in faith and in trust and obedience to God. So that's today's daily Bible reading. We'll see you back tomorrow for another daily Bible reading snapshot. Thank you.